Well, good afternoon. This is, I'm kind of squeezing this in the last uh, hour or so of, of Friday afternoon um, before we, um, on this 8th of September, it's a feast of the Nativity, the birthday of Mary, by the way, the mother of Jesus. And um, it's a good day to wish Mary a happy birthday. Um, today we hosted the uh, deanery, uh, a priest of the area of Yakima that includes um, Sila and uh, Moxie and um, Natchez and Kawichi, the priests from the, serve the communities and then the four Yakima parishes, host them for lunch today to discern and, and, and make recommendations to the bishop, uh, opportunities and things that are going on with the, with the diocese and made that meeting today at noon. All morning today we had a meeting from the, uh, with the contractors and about our school that I'll talk about a little later in this, in this um, gathering. Today's 150th um, uh, broadcast t video that we've done since uh, COVID began. Um, we missed a few weeks in there, but not too many. I was going on vacation a couple of weeks or three weeks, but um, the rest of it, uh, we've had this is the 150th one we've, been, we've done since the, we started this week when COVID began. And um, it's really a pleasure to be able to address you this way and to kind of communicate things going on in our parish community. Um, this Sunday, we have the, uh, oh, tomorrow, I should say, Saturday, uh, Yakima Central Catholic High School 60th class, reunion class um, of 1963. And I was teaching school. I taught school out there for a couple of years when I was first out here. And uh, in 58, in 59, maybe even 60, I forget now, but um, it's the 60th anniversary of their graduation, and I hope to be able to encourage Father Himes to come with, with me tomorrow as we go to make a visit to, um, to their class reunion. Be good to see all old people, 60 years graduated from high school. I know exactly how old they are. So, um, anyways. Sunday we have the collection for the retired religious. You know, those are all the sisters who taught school here and in our city and area and all over the country too. And um, the priests from religious communities like the Jesuits and um, Oblates who have served us so well in this diocese and also the Christian brothers. Um, it's to help all those with retired uh, religious who are now, who have taken vows of poverty, chastity, and obedience and live in community all those uh, wonderful people that have served us this Sunday is an opportunity to reach out and to um, help them in their retirement. Many times their communities, especially uh, communities of sisters, um, especially our Dominican sisters who staffed the school in our parish for a hundred years, um, they're really hurting as a community. They, they never had big investments, so they weren't a, a wealthy community by any means. And now, thank God for the Providence sisters, sisters of Providence who have taken them in in their retirement and helping them, but they don't have the great resources of some of the more affluent societies and congregations in the church. And so they were really in need of your help um, to assist our retired religious taking up the collection this, this Sunday. We talked about it last week. Um, next Thursday, or next Wednesday, I should say, we're beginning a, an opportunity, a prayer group. We have one going for the Grupo de Oración in the Spanish community. Every, they meet every Friday and met, met for years. And, um, but we, we're going to offer this opportunity. Mandy Erskine, who's had great um, experience in helping people to pray better, is uh, kind of hosting and, and chairing this effort that we're making to present an opportunity for our English-speaking people. If you'd like, it's just one hour. So Wednesday evenings, 5.30 to 6.30, you can, you can stop in, attend that chapel. You can stop in um, each week before you, before you have dinner, on the way home from work. Um, but it's an opportunity to deepen your relationship with God and maybe to learn how to pray better if you feel uneasy in your prayers. Mandy's quite accomplished in helping people to come closer to the Lord through prayer. And we pray together 
Jesus said, where the two or three are gathered in my name, there am I in the midst of them. Well, this is an opportunity to do that, just with others who are considering the same opportunity to come closer to the Lord Jesus Christ through prayer. So, it begins this Wednesday. Just show up at the chapel at 5.30, and um, you can be in a formative group that starts this new Ignite, they call it. Ignite your faith, ignite your excitement, ignite your prayers um, to become more like Jesus Christ. So we really hope many of you will take opportunity for that to um, and broad, broaden and enrich your own prayer life. Thursday, this coming Thursday, we have the Feast of the Exaltation of the Holy Cross. It's, a, it's the anniversary of the finding of the cross back in the 4th century, and also the dedication of the Church of the Holy Sepulcher, which was the site of Christ's death and also resurrection. And so um, that, that's a feast we celebrate this coming um, Thursday, uh, Feast of the Holy... And Mass is going to be Exaltation of the Holy Cross, Mass is going to be off at 6.30 in the uh, church, and um, they'll be dancing and partying at 5.30 and afterwards as well. So everyone's welcome. And the, I, I'll say one thing. Our Spanish community really knows how to celebrate. And I hope you'll come and, and that will anticipate and excite you to be more of in a celebratory mood when you gather to worship because they really know how to do that well. I think they can teach the Anglos how to celebrate a little better. But come on and join us. It's for everyone. Next Friday, we have the funeral for Master Christian Burial for Virginia Cole. She and Bud were like pillars of the church for many years. They lived here. Wonderful Christian people, disciples of Jesus Christ, who made no secret of their living the faith. And their... Um, her funeral is going to be on, on Friday here at the cathedral, and um, everyone that know, know, that know, remembers Bud and herself, uh, welcome to come and join with us. A week from Saturday, um, all the graduates of Carroll High School are invited to gather at the, at the convention center uh, for a um, reunion, um, something to celebrate. I don't think, I haven't heard that many of the graduates have gathered from Carroll High School for many reunions, but this is an opportunity for the, all the graduates from that uh, school um, to join in and, and celebrate in their own togetherness and their own spirit of, of growing in Christ as in high school students. When I went to the one a few weeks ago from Arquette and the Academy, their 60th, I think it was 60th anniversary, I just couldn't believe I walked in. I said, what are you old people doing here? How come you're so old? But um, I taught them and I remember them when they were high school kids. Because when I first came out here, I was only um, uh, six years older than the graduates. I was 24 and they were 18. And um, we were pretty close. And we did a lot of things together, and hiking and, and um, days off and going to the mountains and all this sort of thing. We have great memories and a lot of people that I knew as kids, the, the boys particularly from Marquette and um, Yakima Central Catholic High School, um, joined when we went up the mountains and we used to spend a lot of time just hiking and swimming and just looking for pumas or whatever we're going to find up there, who knows. Um, Sunday the 17th, the week from this Sunday, we begin our life team, kick off a life team. There'll be pizza, games, but it follows the Life Teen Mass. That's where we start. Life Teen Mass is a part of Life Teen. And uh, Life Teen Mass, of course, is at 7 o'clock on Sunday nights. And I hope you'll come and join us. All the high school students in our community, and not just within our parish bound, but in all the high school students, and your friends too. They don't have to be Catholic to come. We just welcome all high school students to come for Life Teen celebrations. That'll be the 17th, a week from this Sunday, at uh, following the life team, the seven o'clock life team mass. Mass, of course, is in the cathedral, and the um, celebration of life team night will be in the uh, cafeteria over the school building. Um, let's see what else is going on here. 
Oh, Spy Edge is going to begin on the 21st, the following Thursday. They're actually beginning this next Thursday, and we're inviting them to come to the um, Mass of the Exaltation of the Holy Cross at 6.30 on um, this, this, went, this um, Thursday evening. But um, the actual party part will be a week from Thursday at, at 7 o'clock in the cafeteria again of the school. Told you I'd talk, keep you up to date on the parish center, the former St. Paul Cathedral School. I'm arranging to have the sign changed up way up high on the, on the west end of the school um, to parish center. It's not the school anymore, it's cathedral center. And um, we've had some, some um, definitions and ex explanation of what, what's been done and what's going to be done. You know, we had that big flood almost three years ago up in the fifth top floor, which came down to the whole school and really ruined um, most of the rooms and ceilings and floors and the walls too. And um, some of that's been already painted and cleaned up, but we found out while we were doing that work of rehabilitation that the plumbing was really bad. Um, buildings built in the 40s, which is, our school was built in the 40s, 47 and 48, 49. Um, they used a lot of um, metals that corrode. And also, um, there's a lot of uh, asbestos in the building. It's a very expensive job to um, work in the buildings. However, the parish center, or St. Paul, the old cathedral school, is a tremendous resource that we have. This morning I got kind of an estimate of what it would cost to replace it, somewhere in the in the area of sixty million dollars they figure um, to replace that building. It's very sturdy. It was built well. Unfortunately, the um, and we're, we're going to replace also the windows on the south side because they there's no insulation and there's no the, they were just single windows and so to make it look better too and to um, as a matter of um, just usability, we're going to have the windows on the south side of the school all replaced as part of this work that we're striving to do. A big expense is that we have to renew all the plumbing. We, we found that out as we started to rehab from the, from the um, flood. Um, unfortunately, the insurance doesn't cover the plumbing because that wasn't damaged by the flood. It's, it's our responsibility, and um, the bid came through about $3 million in the area of $3 million. I'll give you the details later on, but uh, we have a million dollars in savings that we've managed to save up over the last many years, and but we're going to have to have a, a, a drive, a uh, financial drive to raise up another couple of million to be able to make that. And I think we can do that, actually. I really think our parish community is generous enough and concerned enough with their own parish, because it's your parish, not mine. I'm part of you. I'm part of your parish, but it, you, you are the parish. You are the church of St. Paul Cathedral. So we're going to put that out. Um, probably I'm going to get a professional um, fundraising uh, committee, a, a society or a uh, company rather, to come in and have a, a professional drive because it's beyond what we can do here as a parish. And, uh, and it's, it'll be a matter of, I hope, of uh, being able to um, respond positively to the needs to make that place usable again. Um, it's a tremendous resource that we have. And all those classrooms we have in there, and the gym, and the cafeteria, the offices, all the rest of it. It's a tremendous resource. And um, to replace it, as we said, we cost in the area of $60 million. I think um, two million which we have to raise, even though it's a lot of money, at least to me it is. Maybe, I hope to you, a lot of you too. Uh, if everyone in the parish uh, exercises responsible and generous stewardship, I really think we can make that. And, um, but we'll get, the details will be actually in, um, in the letter I'm sending out next week on Thursday uh, to the whole parish, it explains it a little bit more in detail, not completely 
specifically have the exact amounts yet, but it's pretty much more in detail about what we have to do to make the school building, the parish center, usable. It's been very difficult to have religious education classes, Life Team, Spy Edge, um, RCIA, Knights of Columbus, all these different funeral lunches, all these different things. It's been very difficult without adequate space, and we just don't have it. In the beginning, we looked into um, demolishing part of the school, but that would cost almost all the, the same as it would be to um, renovate it. The prices are, are, so, are so inflated these days. So we're, we're, we will announce that, it won't be probably till after, um, it will probably the winter and early spring, they will have that drive to try to really restore our building to be a, not only usable, but to be a primary building that we can be proud of and uh, some place that we can really uh, use every day, which we do use every day uh, for classes. The school, uh, uh, Westchester Academy, that was leasing the school in the past is still interested in coming back. And I hope that we can offer this building or uh, put our parish's offices over there or whatever you might have to do. I hope we can have them come back if they want to, but it'll be a whole year before it'll be finished. Uh, the renovations. Um, plumbing, as I say, is a big part of it, but HVAC is also a major part of the renovation too. We want to make sure that we don't waste money as we have been trying to heat that building with no insulation in it over the past um, hundred years, uh, I should say 70 years. Um, it's, we're looking at a long-term usage and it's a tremendous resource that we have in that huge building. And I think really that it's well worth um, investing in it to keep it going because it's, 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 so, be so, it's such a resource, so expensive to replace. CCD, religious education classes begin on Sunday the 17th for the first year students of sacramental preparation from 11 to 12.45. 11 to 12.45 on Sunday to be out of there for the Spanish Mass at 1 o'clock and um, we hope that you'll take advantage of that. Registration is continuing but it won't continue much longer um, so if you're going to register you want to register your children for those classes. Uh, the second year classes will be on Tuesdays every Tuesday um, from 5.15 to 6.45 and then um, we, we follow by mass in a, a few weeks. As I mentioned, uh, uh, Sean mentioned to me, he reminded me today that um, this is the 150th anniversary of these conversations or what do you, what do you want to call them? Meanderings or ramblings uh, from your pastor. And um, we're glad to continue that all, over and over again if you're interested in, in me doing that. Uh, it's been a, been a joy to be able to come into your homes and be present to you in this particular way over the last, um, it's been almost three years, hasn't it? Three years, yeah. Yeah, three years. It's been over three years, actually. Yeah. But anyways, and that's all I think. Did anything else I have to mention, Sean? I don't think so. I think that was it. Sean's my guide and my guardian angel. He keeps things going and, and um, really I bounce things off him a lot. He's a real help to me here. You know, as you know, um, Emma um, is our new uh, office manager, and um, she's helped by um, Daisy. D Daisy, what's Angelus? Angelus, oh, Angelus yeah. Daisy, remember that? <laughs> Daisy the Angel, Angelus, <laughs> yeah. And um, and Daisy is the head of the religious education department now in our parish. And we are really grateful to her for taking this position. She's a wonderful person, and we expect great things from her, as we always do from all our staff. And he's gone and is teaching over at SELA and just student teaching. And um, Parish goes on, and we try to go on with you. And I offer, ask God's blessing upon all of you on our 150th anniversary here of the number of 
videos that we've offered you over the last three years. And so may God bless you and keep you and protect you from all harm. And a special blessing to all of those who are watching this who are sick. May God the Father bless you and God the Son heal you and God the Holy Spirit enlighten you. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen.